Welcome back to DXB Today. Great to have your company uh, this evening as we look at how Dubai, the UAE, uh, are uh, fronting up to all things recycling and sustainability. It is another year of sustainability and we're focusing on that today. We're doing so with a cohort of great guests. Next guest is the founder, uh, leveraging tech to promote sustainability and reduce plastic pollution. Please welcome to DXB today, Mariam Al Mansouri from Rebound Plastic. Great to have you with us. We've gone from re to rebound. It's great to have oh, you yes. on board. Yeah, we're re, re, re today. Yeah. Can I throw another re into the mix, if you mind? Go ahead. Um, responsibility. Sure. Um, in terms of everything we're trying to address here today, how important is responsibility, not just from a multinational corporate point of view, but an individual? So as individuals, we are responsible with how we dispose of our materials regardless of it. So whether it's our clothes, once we've worn something too many times, or it's um, what we eat out of, what we shop with, etc. And I think um, people are now starting to pick up, as, as Jazz and Daniel already uh, said earlier, that it, the mentality is starting to pick up in the UAE. However, it's now matching the value chains not just within the country, but across the world to ensure that what gets discarded, recycled in one place does not have to find its way to the ocean or landfill, but rather goes for a more prominent solution of upcycling or downcycling. Mm. Now, Miriam, what are some of the biggest mistakes we're making? Because I feel like if there's one common thing between me, Tom and Lane, we've talked about plastic bottles quite a bit here, and that seems to be one thing everyone's focused on. What are we not focused on that we should be talking about? Um, They're like, oh, the list goes on. Yeah, the list goes on, but I do know my time limit. So let me just put it in this way. Every action we make has a carbon footprint, even if we cook something at home or heat something in the microwave. So think of plastic as just one item amongst the cardboard, the carpet, the clothes, the metal in the table. Mm. And so what happens to those? Today, unfortunately, um, due to internet trends and hashtags, it's okay. Everyone can, it's easier to, play, to blame one, um, one item. And so when you blame plastics, ask yourself, how will I drink water? How will I um, transport water in, in a, a cost effective, but also carbon effective way? Mm. If everything was transported in glass or in other materials, it's proven. It's talk about science, don't talk about trends. And so we know what the carbon impact is of each material, but our job as consumers is to be aware, instead of buying two water bottles, let me just buy one and continue to refill it through the accessible tap water fountains mm. in the country to minimize buying and putting out more waste. Mm. This is what we're not doing. And then it's so much more easier for me to say, I'd opt to stay or to use only this material because I'll feel much better. But no, I mean, we can sell plastic bottles 60 times more of worth and value than we do of other materials. Mm. And this is what people don't know. So do you think uh, in terms of making people aware and me making people do know what was going on. Do you think it's needed to have more advertising campaigns uh, to Education bring in campaigns. more? more? Yeah, do you, do you think that would be the good thing as well? Education campaigns, Yeah. talk about transparency, traceability, all of this. So we do need educational campaigns for people to be aware of B2C companies and some waste management companies that are capable of picking up your recyclables in a responsible manner. But then at the same time, we need the corporates to also come on board to disseminate that knowledge through their employees and, and offices. And then we also live in a country and in a land which has a lot of nationalities. And so using only English or Arabic as mediums of communication is not efficient. We have lots of populations from different countries. And so also optimizing the use of language, knowing how to communicate. So for an example, going to stores that are located in a certain area where 70% of them come from the same country and using that to advertise versus if we're on a local television and you'd find English or Arabic as, as the most um, optimum. So campaigns are just the start, but then it's working again with the value chain for a traceable um, angle to ensure that materials do flow um, where they're supposed to and not in our oceans. Question to 
both the reads, rebound and re as well. Because we mentioned here, and again, I'm conscious of the fact that a lot of people are listening to these, and I think we've got our head around sustainability now, hopefully. We've had a whole cop come, you know, dedicated to it, and of course, a couple of years. Circular economy is another of these things we hear about a lot. And we hear about the responsibility, but we go on about uh, uh, circular and change, etc. That collectivism as well, if there's a missing link to that chain, is that where it all falls down? Is it, do we have to get to this idea that everyone has to be part of that chain? Well, that's the definition of the word circular, isn't it? I mean, when you, when, even if someone falls out, right, it doesn't stop moving in that, in that kind of thing. Well, when it's linear, it's like this. This is what you're looking at. You break the chain. Yeah. yeah, but when it breaks in a linear system, right, then you have other aspects of the conversation. But when it's uh, circular, right, it's easier to kind of fix that chain again because, because that's the flow of waste that you're creating, right, from design stage to rebound when plastics manage properly, where it ends up, all of this, it creates a value chain that essentially should not be broken. Mm. And that's the biggest advantage. Right? Think of your carpet in the circular economy. Um, there are three or four companies globally that can recycle carpets today. Mm. So they can take your carpets and then stuff them into cushions um, as, as uh, the stuffings rather than maybe getting organic cotton or virgin cotton. Different things serve different purposes in circularity. It's not necessary that a bottle to be converted to bottle again. It can be, and for plastic bottles, it's been proven many times. But for other materials, for textiles, for metals, etc., we can find a solution. It's just that we don't want it mixed with some of your leftover pizza, is what we're trying to say. Brilliant. This is fantastic. Um, stick around, everyone. We're, we're going to just go to a nice VT now and uh, talk a bit more about this wonderful subject of recycling. So as we explore our environment-friendly alternatives in the region, today's spotlight is on a sustainable skincare brand, providing reusable skincare system that reignites the connection between beauty, sustainability, and the power of nature. This is Nouveau Rituals. Hi, my name is Marianne Maguire. I'm the owner of Nouveau Rituals. It's a sustainable skincare collection that looks after both you and Mother Earth. Our formulas are vegan, organic, natural. We don't have any harsh chemicals or toxins that's gonna cause any skin damage or barrier breakage. Um, and all of these formulas are captured in some very aesthetically pleasing glass bottles that are reusable. So you can replenish your bottles with our recyclable refills. So, you know, everything that we're working and striving towards very much aligns with our brand ethos of skincare is self-care is world care. We are really here to disrupt the throwaway culture of bathroom products. We know that with kind of any daily practice, especially within the skincare and beauty industry, comes with a very much autopilot kind of response and, and behaviour to decision making. So what we really want to do is change that behaviour from, you know, throw away, throw away, throw away to reusable. Um, you know, we're very much a brand that believes in beauty is more than skin deep. It's very much in the choices we make. Um, so, you know, it's not just about what you're putting onto your skin and what you're consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's actually also about, you know, what are you giving back to the environment, the community, the world. Um, so our major milestone so far, um, we are very much still baby brand. Um, we only launched in January this year, um, but we are already in two retailers within the UAE. Um, and we have a third very exciting launch coming soon with um, a very large, well-known beauty e-commerce site. Um, so watch this space, that is coming in the next few weeks. For me, Dubai is a breeding ground for dreams to really flourish. Um, I found since moving here, um, the whole kind of feeling of that fear that you get has kind of gone away within, within the years. I kind of get the feeling of feeling the fear and doing it anyway. I think that Dubai um, has a lot of people in here who have you know, stepped out of their comfort zones and they are really striving and achieving towards their dreams. So you know, living amongst these like-minded people really allows you to achieve your dreams and push yourself out of that comfort zone. So from rituals and reusable to the roundup, do you know what you got for us? 
His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Crown Prince of Dubai, has unveiled the Dubai Reef, the world's largest marine reef development project, boost to finish to boost fish and biomass populations. Spanning over 600 square kilometers, the project is the equivalent size to 85,000 football pitches and is made up of 20,000 artificial modules, creating over 400,000 cubic meters of reefs. The project's significant long-term environmental impact will ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. It is absolutely incredible, and I've also read that it's going to create something like 30,000 uh, jobs in the green economy. Honestly, something that everyone's been talking about. Guys, what are you most excited about with this? I mean, look, um, His Highness is an inspiration on all aspects. And um, the, the initiative when he launched it, especially alongside Ray Dalio, just spoke up very, very loudly. Oceans are very important. Coral reefs are critical to water um, well-being and, and the animals that live within our oceans. So we're just as excited. We just need to make sure that the next time we go to the beach, we don't leave any of our waste behind. Mm. Yes, please. And right. desert. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I love the sea and I love being able to be out there and swimming. And I feel it's our responsibility as humans, like we've done so much damage to the planet already that it's our responsibility now to then start giving back and to try and heal it again. So projects like this are fantastic. It's amazing and great to see that it's being supported here in the UAE. Yes? Um, yeah, I, like I said, even before in the first time, right, UAE is a pioneer when it comes to this stuff. Right? So it's just nice to see the country that you call home doing stuff like this, where you go, oh my God, that's amazing. I'm not a big water person because I'm scared, but, um, but always happy for the safety of, of all the animals that live in these reefs, right? So wonderful stuff. I think it's a fantastic thing and uh, I know what you mean because it's going to bring more marine life and more animals, maybe more sharks. So you Yeah, I see. <laughs> that doesn't help my scared bit, does it? No. I think it's, it's all good. the resounding thumbs up from everyone and quite right too. Right, still plenty to come on our recycling and sustainability special. Here's what's coming up. We explore the future of finance with Maitha as she heads down to the Dubai FinTech Summit. Plus, we're getting more insights into modern waste treatment solutions with the team of Dusco. And we've got music in the studio live, so stay with us. <laughs> 